Coming up on DTNS, the cutest little quad copper you ever did see. Samsung still trying to know when to fold them, and HBO takes it to the max. This is the Daily Tech News for Wednesday, October 30th, 2019. In Los Angeles, I'm Tom Merritt. Also in Los Angeles, dangerously close to Tom Merritt, I'm Patrick Beja. I could throw a coaster at you if I could throw a coaster. <laughs> if you could. Uh, and uh, uh, I'm, I'm Roger, Roger Chang, the show's, show's producer. producer. Also in Los Angeles County. Uh, hey, uh, Patrick's here visiting. Uh, it's great. Thanks for coming. Oh, I'm so glad you're having me. And also that the fires are somewhat contained. <laughs> yes, thank <laughs> thankfully. Uh, they are getting contained uh, and things are, are getting better for our dear co-host Sarah Lane and friend. Uh, she is able to go back to her house. Uh, that's the, the major update here. She does not have power. Uh, her mom yet can't go back to her oh, her house. So they're they're still dealing with that. That's why Sarah's not on the show today. Uh, but we did check in with her, and uh, things are going much better for her. So it looks like, hopefully, fingers crossed, we'll have Sarah back tomorrow. Now, uh, on Good Day Internet today, we were talking about uh, all kinds of stuff. What were Uber and oh, yes, at your LAX. Yes, your adventures with Uber at LAX. If you want that expanded show, you got to become a member at patreon.com slash DTNS. Let's start with a few tech things you should know. Twitter CEO Jack Dorsey tweeted that Twitter will stop all political advertising on Twitter globally. He had a whole long thread going into the where's and why's, but one of the things he wrote was, we believe political messages reach should be earned, not bought. Coming to see it the way the French people do. I like it. DeepMind's StarCraft II playing AI system called Alpha Star now ranks above 99.8% of active players in the game. DeepMind published an article in Nature Wednesday describing its use of a kind of reinforcement learning where it played itself against itself, becoming better at StarCraft through trial and error. DeepMind programmed one version of AlphaStar not to win, but to expose flaws in the other version. DeepMind believes its findings can be applied to other things like digital assistants, self-driving cars, and more. It strikes me that an intelligence that points out flaws in the other version might also be called the Internet. <laughs> well, does it qualify as an intelligence, though? That's the mm, Good point. Good point. Mm. Uh, Catalyst estimates Huawei took 42% of the Chinese smartphone market in Q3 as local cons consumers rallied behind the brand as a result of trade restrictions with the U.S. Apple market share took some of that brunt, falling from 7% of the Chinese market to 5%. That's the weakest sales for Apple in a quarter in China in five years. But the rest of Huawei's increase came at the expense of other Chinese brands like Oppo, Vivo, and Xiaomi. So a good deal for Huawei, yeah, maybe, sure. after all. Domestically, at least. Nikkei reports its sources say Apple will release 5G phones next year running on Qualcomm's X55 5G modem and a new Apple chip supposedly called the A14 Bionic. Again, <laughs> Bionic? It's three years old. The cheap chip is expected to be Apple's first 5 nanometer chip, Huawei is thought to be working on a 5 nanometer nanometer chip for next year as well. All right, let's talk about uh, Sony. I, I wonder sometimes, Patrick, if Sony was an American company, whether it would get a little more attention. Because this is the kind of thing that if it was a Google announcement, I feel like it would be all over the mm. top of all of the places. Uh, but image sensor company Sony reported operating profit arose 16% in Q2 as strong image sensor sales offset falling earnings from its gaming division. Sony operating income was 279 million yen. That's 19% higher than expected. And image sensor profits rose 59%. Sony announced plans to build a new image sensor plant in Nagasaki, Japan. Now, I call it an image sensor company kind of tongue-in-cheek because that's where it's often making most of its money, and yet nobody thinks of Sony as making image sensors as its main business, but it has lots of others that are higher profile. Sony announced plans, uh, or Sony announced that gaming profits fell 28%, uh, though PlayStation 4 console sales now in their sixth year have a total of 102.8 million over the lifetime, and that makes it Sony's second best-selling console behind the PS2. So it's not 
too shocking that gaming sales might dip now towards the end of that console life, and we know the PS5 is coming. Uh, Sony Pictures Entertainment profit rose 73% on the strength of the Spider-Man Far From Home movie and Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Sony Music saw streaming revenues rise 21.4%, and physical sales rose too, bringing overall Sony Music revenue up 10.5%. Sony raised its full-year profit estimates by 4%. So except for the gaming dip, overall great news across the board. Well, even on the gaming side, uh, they didn't have any big releases mm -hmm. specific to the PlayStation console uh, in the past few months. So, And they have some coming uh, over the next few months. So that's not, I think, too big of a concern. Um, the fact that the PlayStation 4 has sold that many units makes it, the, as you mentioned, the second best-selling console in the history of consoles. I wonder if some others like the Wii U might arguably be, you know, on the same level. But uh, it is definitely a um, very successful product. And they're doing, if you count that as a not too bad thing, they're doing well all around, it seems. Yeah. Which for Sony is not something we have gotten used to hearing. That is true. Uh, Sony has had some rough times and they've had to slim down. Of course, we mentioned yesterday that PlayStation View is one of its most recent victims, but uh, but they, uh, they have been divesting themselves of some less profitable areas and trying to focus on on the successful areas and gaming is a successful area for it even even with this end of life blip i think that's sort of expected uh this is a this is now a company that is on a strong footing uh which which it didn't always look like it was sure it was going to be yeah i, I think also um the reason we don't hear about it as much as some other tech giants is that they're not really a giant you know they're compared to Google's and Apple's and Amazon's, uh, relatively small nowadays. So. JSC315 says, Sony's just a boring company to talk about, I guess, other than PlayStation and Spider-Man and all the Sony music. And <laughs> it's the devices. Well, the image it's sensors the devices. Yeah, image sensors. Are not, not very sexy. Yeah. No, that's true. That's a good and point. They, they also don't sell uh, consumer devices, you know, like PCs. They and, don't and, have an iPhone. That right. right. The they PlayStation is their iPhone, right? Yeah, that's yeah. their hero device. So, yeah. yeah. All right, well, uh, DGI announced its smallest quadcopter yet. The foldable Mavic Mini weighs 249 grams, small enough to not require a registration with the US FAA. The Mavic Mini can fly four kilometers away for up to 30 minutes while capturing 2.7 video, uh, 2.7K video at 30 frames per second. Nice. Pre-orders for two bundles are now available. A Mavic Mini with remote control, one battery, and extra propellers costs $399. A package that has a 360 degrees propeller cage, two-way charging hub, three batteries, three extra propellers, and a carrying case costs $499. Both bundles ship November 11. It's just a cute little thing, and it does 2.7K video. Uh, I, th that's a big upgrade for the, mm -hmm. for the Mavic. Uh, so not only small and easy to get into, which I, I think that's a big barrier to entry I, that they will probably play up. Like, you don't have to worry about registration and stuff. Anybody can buy this. It's for the hobbyist. Just fly it around in your backyard. It's a, it's a good way to get into flying quadcopters if you're just wanting to start. And I think, I mean, we'll have to wait and see exactly what the people think about it, but it doesn't look like a toy, which... No, it does not. You're important. right. Um, we've heard, I mean, we've seen, I've even looked at, you know, uh, uh, little drones as the, the entry level uh, products. And they look like they will break the first time you use yeah. them. Yeah, no, I, I got one uh, from from my brother-in-law. Uh, that it was nice. It was a nice little mini thing, and it was fun to play with. Yeah, but it was very fragile. This yeah. this does not look fragile. This is a full-on DJI drone. It's just small. Yeah. At the Samsung Developer Conference, Samsung teased a clamshell foldable phone. A video from Samsung showed the foldable working in a laptop shape with the video playing in the upright portion and then playback controls on the flat portion. You can like sit it on the desk in front of you and play some video. You could also uh, do it, they showed it doing a live stream in that same position, just kind of sitting there as its own prop up. Uh, so does this, I mean, they also showed the Galaxy Fold in that same <laughs> video, sort of saying, look, we've got the laptop foldable and the phone foldable. How does this affect your opinion of foldables, Patrick? I, I'm excited. Well, maybe excited is a strong word. I'm curious about all of these. And it kind of reinforces the idea that we're really just at the beginning. 
the technical beginning of foldables. And this is exactly what we should be doing with this technology. And by we, I mean, I don't know, a society. <laughs> um, exploring different uses of that technology. And it's very easy to look at this and snicker and, and kind of laugh at, oh, well, the fold didn't work and they're trying this again now. Are they still doing it? Like, no, they're trying stuff. Some of it will be um, will work out, will be useful. Some of it won't. but it's exactly the kind of thing that we should be doing. See how it can improve usability in the products we use. Um, so I'm, yeah, I, I, I might even say excited for our foldable future. Yeah, I, I like the Microsoft Duo approach, even though it's not a unitary foldable screen over the hinge. But I think Samsung has shown the dangers and difficulties <laughs> of, of trying to do the foldable screen over a hinge. So uh, I like that we're seeing these experimented with. It is my sense now, especially seeing this clamshell one, that there are situations where a foldable screen will come in handy. I feel like this will be like 360 degree hinges on tablets and laptops, the, the convertibles. It'll be a category that some people will love and other people won't care about. I tend to disagree because if it works, what it does, uh, if it works really well and the best version of that thing, what it does is that it gives you more screen real estate in a smaller um, uh, uh, package. And the, the clamshells aren't exactly that. And I, I would argue the Duo, as you said, is the thing that comes closest to that. But having more screen real estate in a smaller package is absolutely key in uh, usage. And that is what consumers want the most out of their uh, devices. So uh, there is something more um, profound or, or key or basic to the architecture of a uh, consumer device in that idea of getting more screen real estate. So there we'll you have see if they can Patrick it. thinks most things might become foldable. I think some things might become <laughs> foldable. And all of you think we're crazy and nothing's going to be foldable. So I didn't say most things. I more things than I did. That's sure. All. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. All right. Facebook monthly users rose 1.65% uh, last quarter to reach 2.45 billion, that's monthly users. Daily active users grew 2% to 1.62 billion. Facebook reported revenue of $17.35 billion and 2.28 earnings per share. $2.28, of course. Separately, Facebook agreed to pay the UK 500,000 pounds in fines but admit no fault as a result of an investigation by the UK's Information Commissioner's, Commissioner's Office into data given to Cambridge Analytica without permission by Dr. Alexander Kogan. The ICO led the European investigation into accusations that Facebook unfairly processed user data and granted app developers access without clear consent. Facebook's Associate General Counsel, Harry Kinmuth, Kinmonth, uh, said the ICO has not discovered evidence that the data of Facebook users in the EU was transferred to Cambridge Analytica, end quote. Yeah, so uh, I, I, it's funny. The reports that I'm seeing, and I'm just double checking, uh, Facebook beats quarterly revenue estimates, Facebook beats revenue profit estimates, shares rise, seem to be fairly positive. I think that's because everybody keeps expecting Facebook to decline. 1.65% rise in monthly users is almost flat. I think in another era uh, where people weren't so negative about Facebook, this would be a horrible uh, report. But the expectations were that it would be worse, and that's always where it, where it matters. Uh, that that said, mm. uh, moving on to the to the Facebook fine, uh, this is a, a great way for everybody to get to say they win, right? Uh, <laughs> Facebook gets to say no fault. They didn't find anything prob any problem with what Alexander Kogan did. It wasn't our fault with what he did. Uh, but the ICO gets to say, we punished them for having generally bad data practices. Yeah, it seems like it's an, an, a pretty neutral, well, not neutral, but everyone can uh, get their we win uh, story somehow in order. The, the thing that struck me the most out of all of this, though, is the fact that the ICO, according to uh, Facebook's general counsel, at least, um, has not discovered evidence that EU 
Facebook users had gotten their data uh, used by Cambridge Analytica, which I think is important because um, there is a general sense in Europe that Cambridge Analytica influenced many things. And certainly, you know, Facebook was involved in different uh, um, elections and election tempering attempts, or at least that's the common um, uh, narrative that's uh, been established in, in Europe for many people. But the fact that Cambridge Analytica, the most emblematic one, um, did indeed not have data from uh, EU users of Facebook kind of puts a little bit of a, a dampener, damper, dampening on that uh, idea. And people who claim, um, oh, well, you know, obviously Cambridge Analytica has influenced this or that in Europe now can't really claim that anymore. Um, so that's that was the most interesting one because it's so emblematic. Uh, Real quickly, uh, before we move on, uh, Apple just released their fourth quarter results and services revenue has reached an all-time high of $12.5 billion. So on track in the pivot to becoming a services company. Mm -hmm. Earnings per share set a Q4 record. Uh, it's Q4 for Apple at $3.03. .03. Uh, financial results generally across the board, uh, pretty good. Quarterly revenue of $64 billion, an increase of 2% from a year ago. Uh, and uh, their forecast for the next quarter beat expect expectations. They expect revenue between $85.5 billion and $89.5 billion. Again, that's a forecast. Uh, we'll hopefully uh, get some interesting things from Tim Cook uh, later from when we're recording this and be able to talk about anything that he says of interest tomorrow. But there's a, a quick look at it for you. Yeah, I suspect that iPhone 11 was uh, better targeted than previous years where they focused on the very high end. Now it's just the regular high end and it sells well. Folks, if you want to get all the tech headlines each day in about five minutes, be sure to subscribe to dailytechheadlines.com. HBO Max will launch in May, AT&T announced yesterday, for $14.99 a month. If you're like, wait a minute, that's the same price as HBO. That's right. Uh, with with you know exceptions for for certain deals and bundles, uh, whether you're paying on cable or buying it directly through HBO now, you're generally getting the retail price of fourteen dollars and ninety nine cents a month for HBO. Customers who pay HBO for an HBO Now subscription directly, not through Apple, not through Google, not through anything else, but who pay HBO directly uh, or who get HBO from an AT&T service will be able to log into HBO Max at no additional charge. Now, they keep saying you'll get HBO Max free, but you had to already be paying for HBO. So it's basically saying we'll make it easier for you to get HBO Max because they're the same price. This is very <laughs> confusing. There's HBO, which is just HBO for $15 a month. Then there's HBO Max, which is HBO plus a bunch of other stuff for $15 a month. Uh, HBO Max, if you want to know what some of that other stuff is, uh, will have human curated lists as well as content grouped by source. Among those sources are Studio Ghibli, TNT, uh, the DC movies, all of them, Cartoon Network, etc. It will also let users follow actors who will post recommendations of what they watch along with video stories, kind of Instagram-like. The mobile version of HBO Max will feature show-related podcasts as well. And later next year, HBO Max will let users select more than one profile is watching a show so that the show shows up in the watched list for everybody who's watching. An ad-supported version and live news and sports programming will launch in 2021. AT&T also announced new unlimited plans for its mobile wireless service, and the top tier includes a subscription to HBO, which in May will become a subscription to HBO Max. That plan is $50 a line for up to four lines. AT&T says it plans to spend up to $4 billion on content for HBO Max by 2025, Netflix is expected to end up spending $15 billion on content in 2019 alone, but it's not exactly a fair comparison because HBO Max is spending $4 billion on content for HBO Max. HBO gets to draw on all that other content we mentioned just now from Warner Media Networks, including HBO itself. HBO Max will feature a series from Game of Thrones set 300 years before the events of Game of Thrones called House of the Dragon telling the story of the Targaryens from George R. R. Martin's book, Fire and Blood. It skipped a pilot and went straight to a 10-episode order. Uh, Game of Thrones Battle of the Bastards director Miguel Sapochnik will co-show run with Ryan Condal, who's writing the scripts. 
And The Long Night, which Jane Goodman uh, was working on, is not going to happen. Uh, that has been canceled. So uh, you're not going to get that, that show at all. Instead, you're going to get House of the Dragon. There's 88 originals in 2021 coming from HBO Max. 38 of those are HBO, but 50 originals just for HBO Max. We've got a whole list of all, all of this stuff. They're getting South Park. We're spending a bunch of money on that. They're going to have a Mindy Kaling original. They're going to have a Hanna-Barbera original. New stuff from the Looney Tunes studios. All kinds of stuff. Uh, I know that you get HBO Nordic, Patrick. Um, so so these offerings may or may not be quite the same where, where you sit. But what do you think of this overall attempt by Warner Media to get into the streaming game? Uh, it, well, it seems... It should be called Warner Max or something because HBO, HBO, I guess that's the answer to the confusing nature of those two services. They just figured we need a wider streaming service and HBO has the brand recognition. So we'll just call it HBO because everyone knows that. Um, but yeah, it seems like it's pretty obvious that you should get HBO Max and not HBO now. Um but, I, I I have often thought, well, there's HBO and HBO Max. It's just like HBO plus more. But now that they're the same price, it feels like they're just replacing HBO. Yeah. Uh, and which, they can't quite do it because they have these contracts for HBO on cable companies. But yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It seems so. Um, HBO Nordic is fine. It's a little bit cheaper. It's 10 euros a month. Um, the app, though, is kind of crappy. You can't favorite series. You have to favorite individual episodes. You don't have multi-profile. Um, so I'll be looking forward to hopefully having, I guess, HBO Nordic using the app that HBO Max is developing. But um, it's it, it, it affects me less because HBO Nordic is HBO now for the Nordic, Nordic countries. I, uh, I look at this and, I, and the one thing I wonder is, are people going to pay $15 even if this has HBO in it. Like, it's smart to say, like, if you paid $15 for HBO, wouldn't you pay $15 for HBO plus a bunch of other things? And the answer is, well, there are a bunch of people who didn't pay $15 for HBO. Mm. Are these other things enough to pull them in? And yeah, College Girls from Mindy Kaling is cool, and that will pull some people in, but I'm not seeing anything in here that is the thing that will pull people in. And the price, Apple TV Plus $5, Disney Plus $7, is not the thing that is going to pull people in. Well, it all hand, uh, hedges on whether or not HBO can retain its premium uh, image, uh, which that, including many, many different, uh, uh, a lot of content in this kind of puts a question mark on. I mean, I guess but, they're um, expecting the HBO stuff like the Game of Thrones to be like, well, exactly. now you'll sign up not just for HBO, but for HBO Max, but we know how many people do that already. Yeah, that's a big question. It's, uh, I guess, it it really reinforces that idea that the uh, stream wars have begun or are beginning now. We're yeah. there. It's there are many many services, and all of them seem pretty cool. But uh, yeah. Well, let's uh, take a quick moment to check in on our thing of the day, and today it is Patrick telling us uh, the latest from Shadow, that game streaming service that you've talked about here before. Yeah, I've talked about it a few times as kind of a proof of concept that uh, streaming can work, game streaming can work. And Shadow is not just game streaming, it's uh, essentially an entire PC on Windows 10 uh, that is running in their on their servers and you stream the video from that. And they have announced a couple of new things. Uh, they are feeling the heat from other gaming streaming services and so they're slashing their prices they have three tiers now the cheapest of which is the the current one which was much more expensive but has a very decent gaming pc for uh, 13 euros a month which is competitive with other gaming only um services you have uh, it's going to launch in in february they have a partnership with ovh which is a french slash european uh, content delivery network slash infrastructure company they have a bunch of things including vr coming to the oculus quest via streaming which is going to be interesting because um the latency is even more important on vr than it is on regular gaming uh, but it seems to be working reasonably well and i have as you mentioned talked about shadow over the past few years uh, on a regular basis, basis, but now I tried it when I was in Paris last time, a few days ago, and it works incredibly well. If you have the, the connection that is required, 
and you are close enough, you know, you are in a big city, but mostly you need fiber. If you have fiber, it, it is very difficult to distinguish from a, a local running uh, device. And I know there are still people who are suspicious about it. I, I think those people are the people who haven't tried it because now the UI works well, the everything works well to the point that I can recommend it. They actually have service in the US as well. Um, if you would be interested into having a PC, you don't need to upgrade yourself every few years and that can run games, give it a try. I think you might be surprised at how well it works. Because you can just install a game on it, right? Yeah. yeah. So that's, yeah, that's a it's good point. It's not a service of, for the games. It's a service for the box. You have a PC. That, so the advantage is you can install anything you want, not just games. That's true. Maybe you want right. to run, you know, an, a, a video editing software or anything. Uh, the, the disadvantage is you have to actually maintain the PC as a full-on PC. Uh, but you can then stream your things everywhere. They have uh, apps on the phones and uh, TV boxes and everything. So it's an interesting alternative. And now at that new price, which is coming in a few months, it's a, a viable alternative, which it wasn't before. The price was at least twice as much. Thanks to everybody who participates in our subreddit. You can submit stories and vote on them at dailytechnewsshow.reddit.com and facebook.com slash group slash dailytechnewsshow. Check it out the mailbag. Nick wanted to share thoughts on yesterday's story on EA coming back to Steam, writing, as for EA rejoining the Steam community, I'm really frustrated with Origin. There seems to be just enough bugs to make it undesirable to buy and play games there. I know I'm not alone, as I know of, no, of others that are experiencing issues with Origin. So EA returning to Steam is welcome. There's one request, though. When EA left Steam, they'll let you take your Steam keys and CD keys for EA games and enter them into Origin to give you an Origin copy of EA games you owned elsewhere. I know it would be very grateful, I would be very grateful, if EA allowed a transfer of games and DLC bought on Origin prior to this announcement from Origin to Steam. Patrick? I'm guessing this is not going to happen uh, because they would need to pay Steam for that, whereas they didn't have to pay themselves for the reverse when it happened a few years ago. However, um, the an important part of that announcement is that EA is working with Steam to enable their subscription service to work on Steam as well for the games that are, in, that are available on Steam. Meaning, if you subscribe to the EA service, then you don't really need to buy the games anymore. And so they are available for you on Steam as well, which I think is a big part of their strategy. Um, they're also going uh, working on streaming, game streaming with their service. So when I was office. saying yesterday that EA won't want to get into streaming, I was wrong because <laughs> EA is getting into streaming. Very much so. They've yeah. flown under the radar, but they are working apparently with uh, Stadia in a kind of a white box service from Google um, to have their own streaming service as well. So I think going back to Steam is part of a, an idea that you have so many of those subscriptions slash uh, streaming services that are coming that in order to be competitive, EA has to be everywhere possible. And that's what they're trying to do now. Well, shout out to patrons at our master and grandmaster levels that keep this show rolling, including Juan D. Hernandez, Kevin S. Morgan, and Paul Reese. And thank you, Patrick Beja, for flying all the way from Finland just to be here. I know you get the bonus of getting to go to BlizzCon later, but I know the real reason you came. That is absolutely correct. And uh, since I'm here, as you said, I will go to BlizzCon and report on that on Pixels my gaming show, which I record every couple of weeks. So if you want, and we'll do a special on what's been happening at BlizzCon, the games and everything else uh, surrounding uh, the company at the moment. So if you're curious, just go check out Pixels on your podcast app, look for it and uh, subscribe and you'll have all the news you need. Folks, you have two more days to make sure that your Patreon is at the $2 level or above, and then you'll get on November 1st, a PDF copy of the official DTNS Good Day Internet Cookbook. It's got recipes from Patrick Beja. We, uh, made, we made sure of that. Do we call it a recipe or just a There is a page in there with your name on it. Excellent. Uh, and recipes from Roger and Sarah and myself and Shannon and Allison Sheridan and so many more. So go sign up now at patreon.com slash DTNS. Our email address is feedback at dailytechnewsshow.com. We're live Monday through Friday, 4.30 p.m. Eastern, 2030 UTC. You can find out more at dailytechnewsshow.com slash live. Back tomorrow and back in the usual rotation with Justin Robert Young. Talk to you then. Bye. 
This show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Get more at frogpants.com. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>